Maccabim Revi'i for Maccabees 15. O reasoning of the sons, lord over the passions, and the belief more desirable to a mother than progeny. The mother, when two things were set before her, the belief and the safety of her seven sons for a time, on the conditional promise, rather, on the conditional promise of a tyrant, rather elected the belief which, according to Elohim, preserves to eternal life. Oh, in what way can I describe ethically the affections of parents toward their children, the resemblance of soul and of form engrafted into the small type of a child in a wonderful manner, especially through the greater sympathy of mothers with the feelings of those born of them? For by how much mothers are by nature weak in disposition and prolific in offspring, by so much the fonder they are of children, and of all mothers, and rather, and of all mothers, the mother of the seven was the fondest of children, who in seven childbirths had deeply engendered love toward them, and through her many pains undergone in connection with each one, was compelled to feel sympathy with them, yet through fear of Elohim, who neglected the temporary salvation of her children. Not but that, on account of the excellent disposition to the Torah, her maternal affection toward them was increased, for they were both just and temperate, and manly, and high-minded, and fond of their brethren, and so fond of their mother, that even unto death they obeyed her by observing the Torah. And yet, though there were so many circumstances connected with love of children to draw on a mother to sympathy, in the case of none of them were the various tortures able to pervert her principle. But she inclined each one separately, and altogether to death for the belief. O oh, holy nature and parental feeling, and reward of bringing up children and unconquerable maternal affection! At the racking and roasting of each one of them, the observant mother was prevented by, rather, by the belief from changing. She beheld her children's flesh dissolving around the fire and their extremities quivering on the ground, and the flesh of their heads dropped forwards down to their beards like masks. O oh, mother, who was tried at this time with bitter pangs than those of parturition? O oh, you, only woman who has brought forth perfect holiness, your firstborn expiring turned you not nor the second, looking miserable in his torments, nor the third, breathing out his soul, nor when you did behold the eyes of each of them looking sternly upon their tortures and their nostrils foreboding death, did you weep? When you did see children's flesh heaped upon children's flesh that had been torn off, heads decapitated upon heads, dead falling upon the dead, and a choir of children turned through torture into a burying ground. You lamented not. Not so do siren melodies or songs of swans attract the hearers to listening. O oh, voices of children, calling upon your mother in the midst of torments. With what and what manner of torments was the mother herself tortured? as her sons were undergoing the wheel and the fires. But observant reasoning, having strengthened her courage in the midst of sufferings, enabled her to forego, for the time, parental love. Although beholding the destruction of seven children, the noble mother, after one embrace, stripped off her feelings through belief in Elohim. For just as in a council room, beholding in her own soul vehement counselors, nature and parentage, 
and love of her children and the racking of her children, she holding two votes, one for the death, the other for the preservation of her children, did not lean to that which would have saved her children for the safety of a brief space. But this daughter of Avraham remembered his holy fortitude. O holy mother of a nation, avenger of the Torah, and defender of the belief, and prime bearer in the battle of the affections, O nobler in endurance than males, and more manly than men in patience. For as the ark of Noah, bearing the world in the world filling blood, rather flood, bore up against the waves, so you, the guardian of the Torah, when surrounded on every side by the floods of passions and straitened by violent storms, which were the torments of your children, did bear up nobly against the storms, against the belief,